Katie, am I good to go? Okay, cool. All right. Bring up my notes here. All right, can everyone hear me okay? Great. So thank you all for coming. I think I'm the last person standing between uh, now and drinks. So I uh, appreciate you all, uh, uh, you all coming. So first of all, um, my name is Rob Underwood. Uh, I am the uh, lead, the global lead for open source at Goldman Sachs. And uh, we presented uh, last year at the uh, Open Source Summit um, about our plans to launch an OSPO. Uh, it was pretty nascent at the time. Um, and we wanted to kind of come back and do a readout on the progress to date. Um, so first of all, a few things I wanted to say was um, I'm uh, also a Linux Foundation alum. Uh, I used to work at Finos. I was the uh, chief development officer. And I just wanted to shout out to Jim and Mike, Mike, Brian, um, and really all of the leadership team. Uh, they're just a fabulous organization. Thanks uh, for having us and putting on such a wonderful event. Um, secondly, uh, you know, happy pride to everyone who's celebrating. The best I could do today were socks. So I have my rainbow socks on. So happy pride to everyone. Um, I'm Brooklyn Rob on Twitter. So give me a follow. Um, we're, uh, I'll talk a little bit about our Twitter handle, which is uh, GS Developer for our engineering group. So if you've not checked out our Twitter handle, it's GS Developer. So I'm just going to bring up my notes here. Um, so a little bit about me and, and where I'm from. So I live in Brooklyn. I'm originally from Maine. Um, I root for Boston sports teams. Uh, I'm into fish and CrossFit, if you want to talk about those things. Uh, Career-wise, i uh, not going too far back, but I was in the Valley at Pandesic, and then I did 12 and a half years at uh, Silicon Valley in uh, management consulting. Did some disaster recovery, civic hacking, which got me connected to the open source community. Um, was the chief technology officer for graduate school. Got into computer science education. Um, hey, Brian. And then um, uh, from there, got connected to financial services and some of the open source efforts. Um, so first of all, I wanted to quickly just you know, highlight like wh what is Goldman Sachs, right? So you, know, you, you sort of hear about these investment banks, and I, I don't know if it's always clear. So I'm not going to get into a big you know, uh, overview of what we are, but we operate a number of different divisions. I work in the engineering division. Um, but then we have a, a global markets division, which is the, uh, maybe what you imagine when you think of a trading floor. Um, uh, we have investment banking, which does M&A um, &A and uh, uh, IPOs and does uh, advisory services. We have a global investment research group. Um, we have our asset management and wealth uh, group. And then we have our Marcus Consumer Bank, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, so we have a lot of different types of things that we do. Um, so again, I was saying we have uh, GS Developer as our Twitter handle. Um, and then definitely uh, check out our new, we have a new open source page, gs.com forward slash open source, um, which will provide you an overview of some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about here. Um, and then finally, I I'll talk a little bit more about our blog in a second. Um, Developer.gs.com is our blog. So check that out. Uh, we have, I would say probably it's been the blog has been live since September. We probably have about 30 or 40 at least posts, pretty deep technical topics there. So definitely check it out. All right, so we, uh, as is our style at uh, Goldman, we, we did a uh, memo uh, back in April of 2021 to talk about uh, why open source is important to us and to lay out our strategy. And uh, I, uh, I, I can take absolutely no credit for, for that memo. My, my, uh, my boss, Rohan, and, and my awesome colleague, Bella, were the ones who wrote that. But they, uh, they had a great line, which has become our, our mantra, which is, Goldman Sachs runs on open source. Um, and you know it's really true. And it's true for uh, lots of financial services organizations. Um, and uh, I think you know, sometimes in an open source community, um, there's a perception that the financial services sector uh, may not do as much open source, but we actually do a lot, and we use a lot, and we, we consume a lot, and we contribute uh, ever more. So 
that's an important part of it. So yes, we consume a lot of, op a lot of open source uh, code uh, throughout our software bill of materials. Um, we participate and lead external open source working groups and steering committees. Um, a good example is uh, we are, my colleague Fee uh, leads the financial objects uh, uh, project within Finos, working at um, the, the models uh, using, kind of at the very top of the OSI model, uh, working on using open source and open source standards to define derivatives models with organizations like ISDA, the International Swaps and Derivatives Association. Um, so we do that. Our engineers contribute to open source on behalf of Goldman as part of their day job. Uh, and that's the real focus of our open source program office is, is contribution. I'll talk, we also focus on consumption as well, but that's our real focus. Um, our engineers are permitted to work on personal and passion projects done for fun uh, on the side and for skill development. Um, and this has been an interesting thing we've been working on in the first year is, is coming up with that, uh, those, those rules of the road for that. Um, so many developers have outside projects um, and we wanna make sure that, that there's a way for them to stay engaged with those. Um, our engineers can speak at conferences. I'm uh, an example of that. Uh, and our engineers write public blog posts. So some of the, you know, I'm not saying everyone, but some, some of the preconceptions that people may come that if you work at a place like uh, Goldman, you, you can't do this or are not necessarily true. Um, so again, our, our open source program office was chartered uh, in April 2021 by this memo. Again, we, we sort of run, run by memo uh, by our engineering divisional leadership and it was launched in April 2021. Um, so we're coming up on just, just uh, under a year now. Um, so what are our goals? Our goals are and we also use OKR, so these are basically our, our objectives for the year. Uh, we wanna promote and support more open source consumption and contribution by GS developers. We wanna position open source consumption and contribution to drive talent attraction and retention. Um, so we think that open source communities and being involved in these communities is a great way to uh, find talent and attract them. Um, we wanna build and expand our, uh, our capabilities to generate insights about open source activity at the firm, in our, in our industry, and within the technology ecosystem. We wanna establish ourselves as a leader in open source, capable of setting the direction of projects, initiatives, and consortia building code and standards strategic to our firm. And we wanna earn a seat at the table. And the way you earn a seat at the table in open source communities by your contribution, by your sweat equity. Uh, so that's the way we wanna do it. And we wanna increase our visibility in the open source community and build further awareness. Um, so what are some critical success factors to, to all of this? So I wrote a few down here that I wanted to focus on. And um, so first of all, I'd say, and this is not necessarily uh, something that anyone can assume in their organization, but I think it's difficult to, to launch an open source program office without strong executive sponsorship. Um, and we are really lucky from uh, Rohan Deshpande, who's our managing director for open source, uh, Scott Weinstein, Ina Slavin, John Madsen, Ia Gazinski, Belinda Neal, our chief data officer, uh, Nima Raphael, who sponsored the open sourcing of Legend, and then up to our CISO, Matt Chung, our CTO, Ate, and then our co-CIOs, George and Marco, have really provided super strong support for open source. And so that is probably the biggest critical success factor is you, and I'll talk about the impetus for why in a second, but that's really important. And then uh, you have to have a strong open source team. And again, we're, we're all in a place right now where we're, we're fighting for, um, you know, for top talent. And, and we are very blessed in our open source program office. I'll give them a shout out, Vicky, Cam, Kay, Yona, and Priya, and uh, Bella who presented earlier today. Uh, you just have to have a great team, and that's a, another key part of the success. Um, I have great peer coaches, Jonathan, Will, Sarah, Alex, Matt, other folks. Um, so those are, those are, that's the people side of it. And then another critical success factor that I just can't highlight enough is, especially in a regulated industry uh, like financial services, uh, I spend a lot of my time every day with our compliance folks, our legal folks, our executive office, our tech risk folks, 
Again, they roll up to our CISO. Um, assuring them, talking through uh, regulatory concerns, legal concerns, um, things we need to think about in terms of the way we operate in the public. Um, and so my advice and a critical success factor is be a collaborator, not a disruptor, um, in terms of building your open source program office, at least if you work in a regulated industry. Um, the, those relationships that you build with your legal colleagues and your compliance colleagues are really important. And my experience has been that they want to work with us and they want to make this happen. Um, so sharp elbows don't work. Uh, collaboration is the, the name of the game. So what are we working on uh, this year? Um, so our number one priority, I think, this year, safe to say, is, is our contribution management platform. And let me just talk a little bit about that for a second. Um, so because of the environment in which we work in, we need to be careful about, I think anyone probably needs to be careful, but we need to be careful about leaking intellectual property. And, and it's more than just intellectual property. Um, it could be leaking anything that you don't want to leak. Um, so we have an, uh, an intellectual property control. And when I say a control, I mean a, like an actual audit control um, where we need to have a review. And think of it as a code review, but we have to have a code review internally before code a pull request uh, leaves our network. Um, and so that tooling is, is uh, important, and we're currently kind of refactoring that. So that's a, that's a big focus for us this year. Um, we're working on our reporting and our dashboarding capability. Um, the Linux Foundation, I was saying to, to uh, uh, a little bit earlier to somebody that, that the Linux Foundation provides some really wonderful visualizations for projects uh, that are contributed to the, to, to the Linux Foundation. We have contributed a couple projects uh, through Finos, the Linux Foundation. Um, so we have those reports, but we want to also be able to report um, on the projects that we have in our Goldman Sachs, github.com forward slash Goldman Sachs. Um, so working on that as well, but also generating operational reports, compliance reports, uh, and insights for our executive leadership is also really important. Um, we also, you'll see that on the gs.com forward slash open source page, we've um, included some metrics there, and we, we want to probably in the future uh, potentially think about ways in which to accelerate uh, the sharing of some of those numbers as well. But right now, our focus is really on our internal measurement and building some of that reporting. We are really working on internal awareness events to build interest in, in open source contribution. So this yes, you can, yes, you, yes we do, uh, is the mantra we're using within GS with our own engineers, right? So there's a lot of engineers still who, who don't yet know or um, aren't aware of, of the fact that they can contribute. Um, so, so helping you know, spread the word. Training documentation, I can't say enough uh, on how important that is. Um, uh, my colleague Kay is working on our, our training and documentation and organizational strategy and um, that's really important. Um, we, uh, we require, um, um, we require uh, everyone who wants to contribute on behalf of Goldman to do some, basically a boot camp for open source, some internal training that they all have to take. So keeping that fresh is important. We've been working on an open source playbook, which are instructions on how to open source a project. Um, so I think it's like 20 steps, but it's a real variety of, of things that need to be done um, from getting initial support, putting together the business case, figuring out how you're going to build a community, but also then real more technical stuff, the license, um, thinking about um, how, do you, how do you properly modularize and generalize and abstract code, right? You take a big code base, maybe it's been maintained for five years internally to our firm, now we need to make it, get it to a form where we can actually present it to the world. So getting all that code readiness stuff is a, is a big part of that. I mentioned our personal side project guidelines um, are, are something we've been focused on. We've also, and I, I have to say, just hats off to the to-do the to -do group. They've been um, incredible to work with. So if you're not part of the to-do group, I would 
encourage you to think about that. But in addition to the, the connections we have with the to-do group, um, we've also been creating ambassadorships with other organizations in our, uh, and you know, that itself requires some compliance stuff we have to go through as well. But um, uh, with other organizations in our industry and other organizations beyond our industry, where we can say, hey, are you seeing any interesting, cool, you know, cool new open source projects? Are you about to, are you open sourcing something? Did you open source something last month that we should be looking at? Hey, we're about to open source this. Um, you know, we'll, we'll give you a heads up when it's, when it's public so you can take a look at it. Um, contributor license management and simplification. So this is, if there's one takeaway, if there's one sort of thing I'd say the industry can improve on, this is it. CLAs, oh gosh, CLAs. Um, you know, when we onboard a new developer um, and we want to get her onto the CLA for, you know, maybe a couple of projects in the Linux Foundation family and then maybe one with Google and then one with Microsoft and then one with Trino and one with Apache, it, it's all over the board. Everyone has a different process for getting onto CLAs. Some people use ICLAs. Some foundations use, have CLAs and with a Schedule A, but then they also use an ICLA because their tooling only can enforce the ICLAs. So we're spending time on that, but if you're in the open source community and you can simplify CLAs, please do. We're, we're, we'd love to, love to get that uh, cycle time to onboard new developers down. Um, we respond, we, we are, our open source program office is a, effectively a support function um, and a, consult, a consulting function, an internal consulting function of sorts. So we get uh, tickets, really, really they're JIRA items, uh, with questions about contribution, um, uh, support requests, um, and our SLA that we try to achieve is, is five days on that. Um, and then we are responsible for uh, open source licenses in terms of the policies. So our, kind of a red, yellow, green, and then if there are exceptions or particular use cases where we may be able to allow something to be used, we, we help consult with our legal team on that. Um, and, uh, and then the actual sort of mechanism of that lies with our CI, CD, and our overall STLC teams. Um, so what are some projects of interest to us? So this is, I built this, we, we, my, my colleague Vicky and I built this slide, um, and then we ultimately use this as a mock-up for what you'll see on the gs.com for source open source page. Uh, but I just wanna give you a flavor of kind of some of the things that we're, we're working on and thinking about. So uh, some of the projects that we've open sourced, I'll talk about a couple of these in a second, um, into our GitHub org. So we sort of self-manage self these. GS Quant, Relodoma, which is an ORM, JDMN, there's a few more there, you can check them out. Then there's the projects that we've contributed, uh, that we've open sourced and contributed to foundations, um, and, and for which uh, two of the three we, we're still the primary maintainers of. Um, Legend, which we contributed into Finos. Um, I was involved with that when I was with Finos, uh, and then kind of that's what led me over to GS. Uh, Catch It. Uh, which we did last year, um, which is some a secret uh, scanner so to look for, for, for secrets that may have inadvertently gotten into your code before you check it in. Uh, and then Eclipse Collections, which used to be called GS Collections, which we've open sourced into the Eclipse Foundation. And then I just wanted to share a couple of the projects that we contribute to, Kong, Trino, Janus Graph, there's a bunch more. Um, so those are the ones that we're, we're focused on. And then, we have tens of thousands of open source projects we use in our software bill of materials that we care about. Um, so this is our GitHub presence, uh, github.com forward slash Goldman Sachs. You, I'm sure everyone here spends a lot of time on GitHub, so I don't think you, know, you need, need, to, need a big orientation on that, but um, you can find our projects there. We have a little readme on the top where we talk a little bit about um, the projects that we've contributed to the foundations. And so that's another thing we, we had to sort of work through, which is um, sort of getting that one-stop shop for everything we've done, right? So, um, you know, we're, we're, we continue to invest a lot of time and energy from our, 
our chief data officer, Nima Raphael, uh, down on Legend, which is this you know, data modeling, governance, lineage, uh, uh, really suite of products that we open sourced a couple years ago. But it doesn't show up from a discoverability standpoint. It doesn't show up on our, on our GitHub anymore because we contributed it to Finno. So um, our workaround was, again, this open source page, which I alluded to, and then working on the readme. But, but some of these mechanical things, you know, it's, it, I think another thing is, you know, be focused on the details, right? There, there, there are operational and details things that you need to be concerned with. And that was, this is a good example. Like, I think it took me a half hour to put this readme together and, and post it, but it turned out to be a pretty big win because now we had that discoverability so that people are like, wait, I thought Goldman Sachs did legend, but I don't see legend here, and now they see legend here. So it's just, it's just sometimes stuff like that that, that, that uh, uh, we, we, um, we have to focus on. Uh, Developer.gs.com forward slash blog. Um, this was a big undertaking and I'm just, there was 20, probably 30 different people who were involved in getting this off the ground. Um, and this has been really great. Uh, the, us getting the, our sea legs and, and getting more comfortable with talking about deep technical topics, which is really from, from Marco and George Ate down, the vision for this is to be a deep technical blog. Um, I'm not saying that once in a while you won't see uh, a blog post that's a little bit more just say, hey, we did this cool thing. But, 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 the, but most of the posts here uh, and the, the theme of the, the blog is deep tech deep engineering and giving our engineers an opportunity to, uh, to showcase their stuff and talk publicly has just been really powerful. And um, you know, this was done in part to support our open source effort and the open source program office was, was you know, definitely one of the driving forces behind it, but it really supports all of engineering and a lot of the other things that we're, that we're, um, that we're working on. So definitely check that out. Um, another thing we've done in this first year of having our open source program office is we launched an open source uh, page. Again, I alluded to a couple of times, gs.com forward slash open source. Again, just saying what we're doing out publicly, right? Um, this is what we're doing. This is what we're contributing to. These are the news and happenings. Again, it might not seem like much, but it's been really important. And it's also really important internally. Maybe it's more important internally because for our own engineers internally, it's, it, it's, it, it demonstrates our comfort, our pride really, in the engineering work that happens within the firm. Um, and so it's been, it's been, it's been great. And um, the collaboration just across the organization um, and support for these efforts has been just fantastic. Um, again, it might not seem like much, but we launched a Twitter handle, GS Developer. Um, uh, but again, being able to tweet out, talk about things that we're doing, um, that's, that's kind of new. And uh, so we've been, that's been kind of really important uh, for us as well. And that supports the blog as well. Um, another thing that we've been really focused on the first year, and maybe this is, reflects a little bit our legacy as an investment bank is we are thinking more and more about our foundations as a portfolio. Um, effectively, I, I think investment portfolio would be too strong a word, but we're looking at the aggregate uh, money we spend on foundations and looking at you know, what, what's the ROI that we're getting out of our involvement, both in terms of the checks we're writing and the labor that we're investing. Um, and you know, and, and is there more we can do to support some of these foundations and some of these efforts as well? So I won't go through all these, a, a number of these foundations are within the Linux Foundation family. Um, some of them are not, um, but we're continuing to look at new foundations we can get involved with. Um, you know, we joined OpenSSF uh, last year, for example, um, and we're really excited by the portfolio of foundations and, and uh, how we can continue to get engaged. One thing I would say is I, I wrote down a couple kind of key takeaways here. And another key takeaway I wanted to mention here is um, I think comparatively, we found it easier to encourage people to contribute code 
than to participate in working groups. Um, and I think that, I think there could be a couple reasons. The pandemic, maybe, although nearly all working groups are virtual and were before the pandemic. Um, but sort of getting people to, to sort of step out of their day-to-day -day work writing code um, and to, to say, oh, I'm gonna now go onto a Zoom call with some strangers and talk about you know, standards or a project, that's been comparatively harder. I'm not saying it's not happening, but that's been a little bit harder to do and something that we're continuing to work on and focus on. Um, and so I, I mentioned that here because we, I think when you commit to being part of OpenSSF, for example, it's not just a commitment of writing a check, it's a commitment of the time and the labor and the effort, right? Or Finos or any of these Eclipse Foundation, right? So if you're gonna commit financial resources, I mean, maybe you just wanna put the logo on your splash page and you want them to put your logo and everyone can say, I mean, and that's fine. I mean, that, that exists, but like buying, you know, buying pixel real estate, you know, f via a foundation membership is something that people do. Um, but I think to be a truly authentic member of these foundations is to be involved in their steering committees, their SIGs and their efforts. And so um, thinking about how we can incent and mobilize our teams to get involved in the mission and work of these foundations is something that we continue to be focused on. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about, I won't go through all of this because some of this is pretty detailed and I know we only have a few more minutes, but I wanna talk a little bit a couple of the projects that we've open sourced. So GSQuant um, is in our Goldman Sachs org. Um, it's a Python toolkit for quantitative finance. Um, go check it out, it's really cool. Um, it was built by our, I mentioned our, our, our global markets division. Um, and uh, there's some really interesting Jupyter notebooks there you can check out. Um, here's a few of them. Um, so uh, you can go look at them, uh, check them out, um, contribute if you'd like. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's a real focus project for us. And, um, and I, I guess maybe, maybe let me pause there and I, I talked a little bit before about um, why are we doing open source, right? And so um, our, 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 one of our co-CIOs talks about, uh, I think you mentioned this in one of our blog posts, Marco said, developers are building the future of finance. And there's another sort of strategic tenant which we talk about at the firm, which is developers as customers, thinking about developers as being customers of Goldman Sachs. Um, in, you know, last year, you may be aware, we launched at reInvent the new financial cloud for data. And then uh, just last week, our, our, our chief data officer, Nima, uh, made a big announcement about some of the stuff we're doing with Snowflake. So we're really thinking about developers as customers. Uh, and so open source is, is, is part of that, and it's part of that strategy. Um, and because to, to meet developers where they are is to meet them in open source repos and to meet them in open source projects. Um, and so we, we need to authentically be part of, of those communities. Um, we also have uh, on that some, some uh, our, our nine engineering tenants and open source is also a powerful vehicle to express really all nine of them, but, but two in particular keep learning and express humanity. Uh, and you know, the, the human factor of open source and the ability to always be learning are two elements of why open source is, is really important to us. Um, and so that's kind of what this is about and why we're all here. Uh, I mentioned Ketchit. Uh, Ketchit is our, uh, again, it's a secret, secret scanner, API key scanner um, that we contributed to Finos. Um, so, Take a look at it, contribute to it, use it, um, improve it. Um, uh, it, it. One of the things I'm excited, by, uh, excited about with the Catch It contribution is, is that this was contributed from our, our tech risk organization, um, which is uh, you know, closely you know, you know, part of our overall engineering family, but the tech risk folks um, are also the folks that we have to work with a lot on some of our 
policies for open source contribution, um, but they are also open source contributors, which is really exciting and powerful. So, so that's, that's, that's fantastic. Um, so I mentioned Legend just quickly. Um, we, you know, our, for this past year of the OSPO, we've been continuing to really uh, focus on how we can help continue to expand Legend. Um, uh, our, and, and I think Legend also provides a good model for how this all can and probably should work. So I don't think open source program offices can be all things to all people and do all open source work within especially a large organization like Goldman Sachs. So when someone says, hey, we want to open source a project, in this case it was our data engineering team, um, they need to take on primary responsibilities for continuing to uh, maintain and build up that community and, and our data engineering team has done just that. Um, and then we are the, I don't know, there's a Bette Midler who said wind beneath your wings. We're the wind beneath their wings. Um, I, I was going to try to work in a fish quote, but I, I, I ended up with Bette Midler. Um, so, uh, but we are the wind beneath their wings of the folks who are uh, open sourcing um, uh, their projects. And, and so this is a little bit about Legend. If you want to see Legend, it's legend.finos.org. Um, that's a screenshot of a press release. Um, there's a hosted, through Finos, we've uh, provided a hosted modeling platform. Again, so, so folks can actually use Legend uh, to actually do modeling, to do public modeling. This is how the, the aforementioned Financial Objects Group is doing its derivatives modeling. Um, they're, they're able to model these derivatives out in the public using open source, using a public modeling tool. Um, so that's, that's all pretty cool. Um, so here's a few of our resources. I won't go through all this, but that's, that's some of the stuff up there you can take a look at. And that's all I have for material. Let me just make sure I, I will take a few questions, but um, there were just a few final things I just wanted to make sure uh, I left you with. So did I mention contributor license agreements? Yeah. Did I mention contributor license agreements? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. If I didn't mention that, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, so CLAs and ICLAs and DCOs and figuring out how we can make it easier for folks to rapidly get onboarded to all of the CLAs and ICLAs that they need to be part of in order to contribute across the foundations and organizations is a key thing. Um, we're thinking a lot about licensing. Again, we do have uh, responsibility for open source license consumption. Um, so looking at different scenarios, not just looking at um, the, the presentation earlier today was fantastic from this very podium about licensing, uh, but, but also thinking about some of the licensing scenarios for, you know, I'm going to use this, li this package as this license, and then I'm going to contribute to this other library that I'm going to use in combination with it, and then I'm going to put it on a hosted platform. Am I, like, those sort of combinations and those algorithms of scenarios, if you will, Looking at that is uh, something we're thinking a lot about and eager to see what comes from the community on that. Um, again, I mentioned participation. Um, we are excited to encourage even more of our developers to get involved in working groups. Um, that's a big focus uh, uh, for us, um, encouraging folks to go to conferences, attend meetups, just be part of the community. Um, and then finally, I'd say another thing that I think we're focused on is, I mean, I think this is common to developers generally, but, but looking at ways to, to get developers to think about uh, looking at open source, I guess, alternatives, for lack of a better term, before they go and build something themselves. Um, you know, there's a ton of stuff just in the financial services ecosystem being developed um, that we need to be thinking of, that we could be looking at. And so really, that discoverability of, uh, of other things before you go and build it yourself is something that we're continuing to work on. So thank you, everyone, Brian, uh, everyone, uh, for, for having us here. It's, uh, it's fantastic to be here, and, and it's great to be in person. It's a little hot. I, I, did, I did suggest to, to the Linux Foundation, I'm from Kennebunkport, Maine, I did suggest that if you want to do your conference on the coast of Maine, um, it, that it's, it's lovely in July. Um, there's uh, fish is playing in a couple weeks. There's lots of good things about Maine, but, but it's lovely to be here in Texas as well. So with that, I will take uh, a few questions and thank you again. Yeah. Thank you.
right, so thank you. And kudos for one year of open source. That's thank fantastic. You. We are thank currently you. Fannie Mae spinning up their OSPO. Oh, we're cool. about one year in, so I'm going to bother you a little bit after this. That's, that's and I will not hold you all up because I know it's And, 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 and I would be misrepresenting it to say we've, We've not been doing open source only for one year. We've been doing open source for much longer than that. We've been contributing for much longer than that. But having a formal open source program office is one year, so yeah. Okay, so that helps my next question. Okay. I was going to say, so kudos to you for being able to get three projects in one year incubated yes. into a foundation. And I'm like, how did you do that? No, no. It took me close to two and a half to just get two in with my other company. So, yeah. so if this falls out of the scope of this session, I definitely want to know how you did that especially in financial regulated companies. So like, that's huge. So that's, that's all I had to say, so. I, I would say, yeah. We, we did do one, we did, we did catch it. And I would say, um, there was a book a few years ago called The Checklist Manifesto. I'm sure the author would, would not want me to discourage you from going out and checking it out. Um, but the big idea of the book effectively is make a checklist. Um, so, so, but, 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 but there's lots of good stuff in there, but the, but the, but, but the, I, writing it down and having a checklist and going through open sourcing, uh, a few times, um, and, you know, just really just writing it all down and having that, I mean, it, and it doesn't need to be fancy, right? It need only be just check boxes and a confluence page, right? Um, you know, but just keep it simple and having that available uh, and, you know, using it and improving it. I mean, one of the things that, you know, I really, there's a lot of things I love about working at Goldman, but, but one of the things is, is people are always thinking about how can we improve this? And there's almost sort of a native iterative development or iterative, like, how we, you know, like we, we, almost everything we do, we go and we do a retrospective on, okay, so we just did this, how can we do this better? And so that iterative nature of things, so open source something and then like really like, okay, how can we really do this better? What did we miss? And then the other thing is I'm a big fan of, you know, uh, critical path analysis and PERT charts. We, we use the working backwards methodology, right? So work backwards from, you know, write your press release or, you know, faux press release work backwards from that and then figure out, okay, so the day before the press release, I need to have this, you know, ready. Then the day before that, I need to have this ready. And the day before that, and then again, it's really just a PERT chart or a critical path analysis, but that sort of approach I think can be really helpful. Really like I'm on in August. You're gonna see fish in August? Where are you gonna see them? Oh, great, great, good, good, all right. Well, I know there's at least one other fish head in the audience I won't disclose. Oh, there he is, hey, yeah. okay. That's great. That's good. So, what would you say has been your biggest, uh, your biggest institutional difficulty from moving from moving into actually having an OSPO? Our biggest institutional difficulty. Yeah. What's what has been hardest to do? Um. Well, I I I, I guess I this is not a throwaway, but I I I think. What, what hasn't been the hardest in the first year, but was ne the necessary precondition, was the impetus for needing to do this in the first place. Meaning we, we, we knew we had this strategy and plan to start launching new products like the financial cloud. Uh, and uh, we, we knew we had a strategic intent to embrace developers as customers. Um, and um, um, and so get, I, I would say it was probably the biggest challenge was a challenge that maybe existed before I came along, which was having that really, I, I, and I, I just can't say it enough, having that support of, of our, from our CIOs down, um, our, our project is, you know, the Open Source Program Office is a strategic initiative for the firm. It's, Having that support is really, that I think that, so I won't say, I won't say that was the most difficult thing, but that was like, without that, I don't know if any of this would have been really possible. I think we really needed that, that support. It's because, because I, I, I would say there are, on any given day, there are things that pop up. And, you know, when you have, 
you know, executive sponsors that will help move mountains to, to make it possible and make it happen. Um, that's, that, that's really, that's really what it's, I mean, there's all sorts of like little things I'd say. I mean, I, you know, I, I think, you know, um, all of the different licenses and license combinations and scenarios that I alluded to earlier, I mean, those are, um, it seems like those are, the complexity there is, is getting higher still. Um, but uh, I, think, I think, again, I wouldn't frame it as a difficulty. I'd frame it as, you know, it, it could have been a difficult, difficulty if not for that, yeah. yeah. Hey, Rob. Hey, what's up? So just curious, uh, for the projects that you contribute to, yep. what is the kind of decision matrix, like decision making matrix that you have? Like, is that something where a developer says, I want to ship this patch upstream and then, you know, you kind of do it patch by patch or it's like, that's this project question. is strategic and we want to contribute yeah. to this regularly and then it's kind of up to the developer how much they contribute. That's a great question. That's a great question. And then and, and we're shifting on that, so that's great. So um, historically, the choice of I want to start contributing patches to XYZ project was largely just left to the individual developers. Um, we, we had and still have developers who are contributing to projects on behalf of Goldman that we ourselves don't actually consume. Um, we are, that is changing. And I, I alluded to the reporting and analysis stuff that we're, I don't wanna purport that we're further ahead than we're not, we're, 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 we're still early days on this. But we're starting to look more at, okay, so, you know, let's parade, like, let's parade of this, right? 80-20, right? So, you know, these are the 20% of the projects that we really care about the most, right? That represent 80% of like the, the activity and really important. How do we get involved in those projects, right? And so in the wake of some of the things that happened over the winter, you know, in the open source community, we're, we're definitely starting to look more at, okay, so how can we identify projects that we really rely on? And, you know, are there interventions that we can provide to those projects, right? Should we, um, be contributing more time or more patches to this project because we really rely on it and we think it could use, you know, some more contribution or stuff like that. But that's a, we're, we're, that's a, that's a great sort of framing of it because that's changing. We're trying to be, you know, because there's, there, there is only so much time in the given day that aggregate our engineering teams are going to be contributing to open source, right? So directing that strategically would be a good thing to do, right? Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, maybe just a follow-up on that. Because you have, you're in the unique position of also being a bank, right? We are a bank, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's true. So, um, so are portfolio managers looking at, um, like, alternate strategies or projects that they can fund to add to their portfolio that might come under open source? like? like funding a DAO, for instance, for uh, open source development? I don't know that we've, um, I don't know that we think about it or have thought about it that way. I mean, we're a big bank, right? So there, there may be, I just don't know on that. I, yeah. the conceptually, that makes some sense, right? You know, and, and I think that open source is certainly an area on that, but um, we, uh, yeah, I, I but but I, I think thinking about the w different ways in which we can fund the ecosystem, you know, foundations being but one. Um, we also have a bug bounty program. I think things like that. Um, those are different ways to sort of thinking about that. Yeah. For yeah, sure. and that's that's a technical approach. But it, perhaps you know your influence could bubble up to yeah. some, some yeah. selections at the yeah. portfolio level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank cool. you.